Hey there, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be creating a gallery with some nice and cool hover effects. The project will be created based on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Before we jump right into creating the project, I'm going to describe it. So, as you can see, we have here a gallery which consists of a couple of different boxes, uh, each of them including some icons. If I hover over the boxes, then we will get this nice and cool hover effects. As you can see, the boxes are changing their background colors, but the backgrounds are expanding from different directions. I mean, if you hover over the box from the left side, then the background will expand from the left side. I mean, from the bottom left corner. But if you hover over the box from the right side, then the background will expand from the right bottom corner. Okay, so that's the way how our hover effect works. Again, the background is changing from different directions depending on the mouse movement. Alright, so before we start to write the code, please don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you never miss out our upcoming tutorials. Alright, let's get started. I have created a new folder on the desktop called Gallery, which right now is empty. I'm going to open it in VS Code. And then I'm going to create our working files. We need three files. The first one is going to be index.html. Then the second one will be style.css. And also I'm going to create the file for JavaScript. Let's call it app.js. Let's go ahead and open index.html file and create the basic HTML document. We need exclamation mark, then hit tab or enter. So here we go. We have here the basic HTML structure. I'm going to change the title, let's call it gallery, and then I'm going to link the CSS and JavaScript files. Let's go ahead and open link tag and specify here the file name, style.css. Then we need to open script tag with source attribute. And now I'm going to insert here the file name, it's going to be app.js, and besides that we need to use attribute called defer. This attribute tells the browser to defer the execution of the script until the HTML parsing is complete. This means that the HTML content will be loaded and parsed first and then the script will be executed, which can help improve page loading performance. Alright, so now I'm going to open the project live in the browser. We have to click here open with live server or you can click the button here go live. So, as you can see, the project is live in the browser. Let's go ahead and place the browser and the editor side by side, like so, in order to make our working process simple and convenient. The next thing that I'm going to do is to bring in one more link here. Actually, throughout this project, we're going to use some icons. And in this case, I'm going to use icons called box icons. Let's go ahead and search for Box Icons. So this is the website of Box Icons. So we need to grab the link in order to use the icons. We have to click here, Usage. Then I'm going to click Import the CSS. And I'm going to grab this link from here. Let's copy it. And paste it in the head element. All right. So we are ready to start to write the HTML markup. Let's open div element and it's going to be container. Inside the container I'm going to open another div with a class name gallery in which we'll have a couple of different boxes. Let's open div tag with the class names box and then box1. So the first class name will be used for comma styling, as for the second one we will use it for individual styles. I'm going to insert here i elements, I mean the icon with the classes bx, bxl, aws. Let's check the browser. So as you can see we have here the first icon. So overall we will have 8 different boxes, therefore I'm going to duplicate this code seven times 
and then quickly change the class names of the boxes and also the class names for the icons. So we need here box number two, then MongoDB, and then we will have box three. The icon is going to be Netlify. Then the next one will be box number four. It's going to be TypeScript. Then box number five. In this case, I'm going to use Visual Studio. Then we will have box six. And the icon is going to be GitHub. Box number seven with the icon JavaScript. And finally, box number eight. We need here GraphQL. Let's check the browser. So as you can see, we have here eight different icons. All of them are displayed. Okay, so that's it about the HTML markup. Let's move on and start to write the CSS. First of all, I'm going to create some default styles. I'm going to select every element using an asterisk. And I'm going to set margin and padding, both of them, to zero. Also, I'm going to set box sizing to border box. It means that the width and height of the element will include the padding and also the border. Besides that, I'm going to use RAM as the measurement unit throughout this project. So right now, one RAM is equal to 16 pixels because by default, the font size of the HTML element is equal to 16 pixels. I want to convert one RAM into 10 pixels, it will be more convenient, and therefore we have to decrease the font size of the HTML element. So let's set font size to 62.5%. So in this case, one RAM will be equal to 10 pixels. And if we check the browser, you will see that the elements became smaller. Next, I'm going to take care of the container. Let's select this element. Define height, I'm going to set it to 1. 100 viewport height. It means that the container will take up 100% of the height of the viewport. Next, I'm going to place the content in the center. We can do that with a couple of different ways. In this case, I'm going to use CSS grid. So we need display grid and then place items center. So as you can see, the items are placed in the center. After that, I'm going to take care of the gallery. Let's select this element. So first of all I'm going to define width and I'm going to use one of the functions called clamp which will take three different arguments. So the first one is going to be 30 RAM, then we will have 90% and then 130 RAM. So this line sets the width of the element using clamp function the function takes three parameters, a minimum value, a preferred value, and a maximum value. So in this case, 30 RAM is the minimum width the element can have. 90% is the preferred width, which means the element will try to occupy 90% of its containing element width. As for the third value, 130 RAM, it is the maximum width the element can have. So if the containing element is larger than 130 RAM, then the element's width will be capped at 130 RAM. Next I'm going to use aspect ratio and I'm going to set it to 16 slash 9. So an aspect ratio of 16, 9 means that the width of the element is 16 units for every 9 units of height. This is commonly used for videos and images to maintain a specific width to height ratio. Next I'm going to define the background of the gallery. Let's use background image and then we need linear gradient function. So first of all, I'm going to define the direction of the color transition and I'm going to use degrees. The value is going to be 95.2 degrees. So the gradient will start from the top left and end at the bottom right. Next, we need to define two different colors. The first one is going to be ADFC. EA. As for the second color, I'm going to use C0E5F6. So, in case of the first color, I'm going to add here a percentage value, 26.8%. As for the second color, I'm going to add here 
64%. So let's check the browser. As you can see, we have here the background of the gallery, which looks pretty nice. We have here a linear gradient effect. So at approximately 26.8% of the gradient's length, we are creating a light greenish color. And at approximately 64% of the gradient's length, we are creating a light bluish color. All right, after that, I'm going to take care of the alignment of the elements. So I'm going to use CSS grid. We need to display grid. And then I'm going to use grid template columns with the repeat function. And the values will be six and then one fractional unit. So the repeat function specifies that there are six columns in the grid and one fractional unit indicates that each column should take up an equal amount of space within the grid container. All right. After that, I'm going to specify the position of each box separately. Let's go ahead and select box one. We need to define grid column with the values 1 slash 4. So this line of code indicates which column lines the element should start and end on with the grid. In this case, the element starts at the first vertical grid line and ends at the fourth vertical grid line. This means the element spans from the first to the third column. The third column is included. Okay, next we need grid row with the values 1 and 2. So this property indicates which row lines the element should start and end on within the grid. Here the element starts at the first horizontal grid line and ends at the second horizontal grid line. Thus the element spans only one row. Okay, so the first box is aligned. Next I'm going to take care of the second one. Let's duplicate this code, change the class name. So in case of the box two, we need grid column four and then minus one so minus one specifies that the element should end at the last vertical grid line the minus one indicates the last line of the grid counting from the end this is a shortened notation in css grid to specify the end of the grid without explicitly counting the number of columns as for the grid row we need the same values so the second box is aligned. Let's move on and take care of the remaining boxes. We need box three. So in case of box three, we need grid column one, three. As for the grid row, it's going to be two and three. And then we need box four. So we need here three and five. As for the grid row, it's going to be the same. Let's duplicate this code. We need box 5. So in case of box 5, we need 5 and minus 1. As for the grid row, it's going to be the same, 2 and 3. Next, we have box 6. And it's going to be 1 and 3. I'm in the grid column. As for the grid row, we need three, four. Let's duplicate it once again. We need box seven. So we need here three and five. As for the grid row, it's going to be three, four. And finally, we need box eight. So the grid column is going to be five minus one as for the grid row it's going to be three and four all right so all eight boxes are aligned next i'm going to take care of the icons let's go ahead and select box followed by the eye elements so first of all i'm going to define the font size again let's use clamp function so we need here three values 
the minimum value is going to be 2 RAM. Then we will have the preferred value 6 CQI. So this unit is a part of container query length units. If you hadn't heard of them until now, container queries are similar to media queries. However, instead of being based upon the size of the user's viewport, these styles can be changed according to the size of one of the element's parent containers. Now, in the same way that viewport height and viewport width are relative to the size of the viewport, container query units are relative to the size of their container. So, CQI stands for Container Query Inline, 1% of the containers, and by default it is equal to 1% of the containers inline size. In our case, we have 6 CQI, which means that we have 6% of the containers inline size. As for the maximum value, I'm going to use 6 RAM. Alright, after that, I'm going to define the color. It's going to be 888. Then we need position. Let's set it to absolute. And we need position relative for the box. So I'm going to select box. It is a parent element. Let's set position to relative. And also I'm going to set cursor to pointer. Next I'm going to define top and left properties. Actually we're going to center the icons inside the boxes. And for that we need top and left properties, both of them with 50%. And besides that, for perfect centering, we need transform translate function with the values minus 50% and again minus 50%. So now the icons are placed perfectly in the center. After that, I'm going to create before pseudo element. Actually, once we hover over the element and the background changes, it is a before pseudo element. So we're going to create this element. Let's go ahead and select box followed by the before CD element. First of all, we need to define the content. It's going to be empty. And then we need width and height. Both of them should be 100%. Then I'm going to define position. It's going to be absolute. And finally, I'm going to define background color. Let's use RGBA value. We need white color with the opacity 0.8. All right, let's go ahead and check the browser. So here we have the before city elements with different background colors. They are taking up the entire width and height of the boxes. Next, we have to take care of the shapes of the before CD elements, I mean, if we take a look at the finished project and hover over the boxes, you will see that the backgrounds are expanding from the bottom corners of the boxes. So we're going to get those shapes using clip path property with polygon function. So let's go ahead and search for clip path then I'm going to visit this website here. So this website allows you to generate different shapes. Here we have some shapes here. In our case, I'm going to select the second one, trapezoid. Let's make it rectangular. So down below you can see clip path property with polygon function and with the proper values. So we're going to change the shape of the before pseudo elements, I mean the backgrounds from two directions, I mean from the left side and from the right side, we're going to create this kind of effect. I mean, we're going to change the background from the bottom corner in case of the left direction. As for the right direction, we're going to do this kind of thing. So that's the way how we can define the change of the background. So the values of the rectangle will be the default values and then we will change the values of the polygon function according to the directions, I mean the left and right directions. We will use these values here in case of the left direction and then 
those values in case of the right direction. Okay, let's grab those values and insert them here. Alright, so now we have to define the same clip path property with different values for before pseudo element. I mean, we have to define the left and right directions. We're going to select box with new classes. In this case, we need left effect followed by the, actually, I'm going to use here camel case. Let's add here before pseudo element. So in case of left direction, we need these values here. Let's grab the code. Then I'm going to duplicate this code. Let's change the class name. I'm going to use here right effect. In case of the right effect, we need this code here. Let's replace this code. All right, so both directions are defined. We're going to use those classes in JavaScript. Let's go ahead and open up the JS file. So the first thing that we have to do is to select all the elements with the class box from the DOM and store them in an array. I'm going to name it boxes. We're going to select boxes using query selector all method, which returns an array-like object called node list. I'm going to use the spread operator to convert the node list into an array. So let's create a new variable and call it boxes. As I said, we need an array with spread operator. We need three dots and then we have to select boxes using query selector all method. I'm going to define here the class name box. All right, after that, we have to iterate through the boxes array using forage method. So let's use boxes followed by the forage method. I'm going to insert here an argument box. After that, we have to add an event listener to the box with mouse move event. We're going to create the hover effect once the mouse moves over the box. So I'm going to add an event listener to the box using mouse move event and we have to insert here a callback function i'm going to insert event object here so the first thing that i'm going to do here is to define the position of the cursor so let's create a new variable and call it cursor position so this variable will be equal to e dot client x minus box dot get bounding client rect function followed by the left property so let me explain what this line of code does so this line of code allows us to calculate the position of the cursor e dot client x property retrieves the horizontal coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the left edge of the viewport then we have the left property it represents the distance from the left edge of the viewport to the left edge of the element. So this calculation allows us to get the position of the cursor on the box. Next, I'm going to define the width of the box. Let's create a new variable and call it width. It's going to be equal to box dot get bounding client rect function followed by the width property. So in order to make those lines clear, I'm going to run to the console both variables. We need here cursor position and then width. Let's go to the browser and inspect the page. Go to the console tab. So once I hover over the box, then we will get the position of the mouse and the width of the box. As you can see, the width of the box is 650 pixels. As for the position of the mouse cursor, it changes when I move the mouse. 
So we have the position from the left edge of the box, as you can see. Now it is zero because uh, the mouse cursor is on the left edge of the box. All right, let's go back to the VS Code. So now we're going to create an if statement in which we have to check if the mouse cursor is on the left part of the box or on the right part. So in order to check it, I'm going to use if statements. We need cursor position to be greater than width divided by 2. So if the position of the cursor is greater than the half of the width of the box, it means that the cursor is on the right part of the box. And if this condition is false, if it is less than the half of the width, it means that the cursor is on the left part of the box. So if this condition is true and if the cursor is on the right part of the box, then we have to expand the background from the bottom right corner. Therefore, we need to insert here the following. I'm going to add a class right effect to the box. And at the same time, we have to make sure that box does not include this class name. So in order to do that, I'm going to use not operator followed by box dot class list dot contains left effect. And as I said, at the same time, I'm going to add to the box the class name right effect. So we need box dot class list dot add right effect. So if this condition is false, I mean if the position is less than the half of the width, it means that the mouse cursor is on the left part of the box. Therefore, we need else statement in which I'm going to insert this code and change left into right and right into left. So in this case, we need the background to be expanded from the left bottom corner. All right, let's go to the browser. So now the background is changing, but we need transition for smoother effect. Let's add here transition clip path. The duration is going to be 0.5 seconds and also I'm going to use cubic busier function with the values 0.215 then 0.61.355 and 1. Let's check the browser. So as you can see we have here this nice and cool hover effect. The directions work fine if we hover over from the left side then the background is expanding from the left side if we hover over from the right side then the background will expand from the right side now we have to get rid of the background once the mouse leaves the box therefore i'm going to add here to the box an event listener with mouse leave event Let's insert here a callback function. So once the mouse leaves the boxes, then we have to remove classes left effect and right effect. So we need box dot class list dot remove left effect. And we need the same thing for the right effect as well. All right, let's check the browser. So as you can see, everything works perfectly next we have to take care of the icons let's take a look at the finished project so on hover they are moving according to the directions and also they are changing the color so let's go ahead and select box 
with left effect. Now we need here hover effect followed by the eye element. So we need to change the color, it's going to be white. And also we have to move the elements using transform, translate with the values minus 80% and then minus 50%. Let's duplicate this code. We need here right effect. As for the value of the translate function, it's going to be minus 20%. And then we need the transition. Let's add here transition transform 0.5 seconds and color 0.5 seconds. All right, let's go to the browser. Actually, this is the finished version. Let's check. So, as you can see, everything works perfectly. And actually, with the project, we are done. If you like this video and enjoyed the project, then please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell to get notified on upcoming tutorials. See you in the next video.